Hey, Steve. Yes, Jenna. What do you call a sick bird of prey? I don't know what. Illegal. Oh. Oh, I. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Engage, a family gaming podcast. This is episode 173, and I am your host, Stephen Dutzman. This is the official video game and board game podcast for EngageFamilyGaming.com. Is EFG, I can't even say the name of my website, uh, is a website where parents like myself and my co-hosts come together to give parents and families the information they need to get their family game on this week. Um, I'm, I'm hurting, but I'm being carried across the finish line by my good friend, Amanda Farrow, uh, editor in chief of like six different websites. Um, <laughs> they multiply um, master of the universe, um, and all that, um, princess of power. I, I do really like the idea of me being secretly Shira. Um, sure. There's lots of princesses of power now. I don't know if you watch that show, but there's multiple. I sure do. Guess what? I'm totally caught up on now. Shira. All Shira. right. There's lots of princesses of power. You can be one of them, sure. the video game one. Um, and so, because that's on brand for what we're talking about today. Speaking of video sure. games, um, I know last week, in I, I promised that we would talk about spoiler season for a couple of collectible card games, um, which immediately excited half of my board game audience and made the other half, like, not excited. Um <laughs> It was a divisive declaration. But guess what? I'm pulling an Audible. Um, Audible specifically because they released the NFL schedule today. So that makes the uh, football joke good. But also um, because yesterday the video game industry just decided to like announce a bunch of stuff. Um, we got the first details of a PlayStation 5. We got Xbox just not making big not making good decisions um we have although maybe it'll be we'll talk about that uh we got GameStop with a new weird return policy for certain games um we got Joker and Smash today um his um, ultimate is so cool is it is it persona rific um yeah she gave me two thumbs up um so <laughs> so yeah i mean before we get into all of that I do want to take a moment to thank you for listening this week. Um, We want to make our podcast more interactive, so please feel free to reach out to either of us on social media uh, or message uh, Engage Family Gaming on our Facebook page at EngageFamilyGaming.com slash Facebook or Facebook.com slash EngageFamilyGaming because we're fancy. Um, We are getting close. We are on the chase to 2,000 followers on Facebook now or 2,000 likes on Facebook because they're they're followers on Twitter. Now, I... Now we're on the chase. We're at like sixteen forty-five. That's not like there, but we're close. And I want to get there ASAP. So here's what I'm asking: If you don't like us on Facebook already, please go like us on Facebook and then send us a message with whatever feedback you have. I would absolutely love it. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, normally we would go around the horn. Do you want? Do you have anything that you would? Uh, any video games that you would like to chat about? Have you, uh, I saw you playing Falcon Age in VR on on Ready Player Mom on Friday. I sure did. That was a delightful disaster. Um, I mean, playing I a... live streaming VR games strikes me as a challenging endeavor. I sure did it though. You did. I came back with Astrobot. Um, I was having some challenges with how Falcon Age was uh, registering the VR. Yep. So I had a conversation with the developer about that. So we're okay. They released a patch. Everything's fine. Oh, they did? Um, yeah. Isn't, I, I isn't told the great? developer about it, and then, yeah. yeah. I mean, Eka's great. So they he said is? that they were going to be releasing a patch. If not this weekend, then it, it's probably already out. I don't great. know. I haven't checked. So, so, so you played. Falcon Age was cool. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I Good. played it. I actually ended up playing it at GDC, um, but I couldn't talk about it. You could not. So, no, I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to talk about it. So I, I loved it. I love everything that I've seen about this game. I love my bird friend. And just because I wasn't super successful <laughs> on yeah. Friday with Ready Player Mom, um, I'm going to try again probably this, this Friday again and see if it works Sure. for Good Friday. Um, uh, here's the question. I, Baby bird or big bird? Baby bird, always. Avi, okay. Ob- Ob- You're on the right side of history. Yes, I absolutely am. I love Baby bird. Baby bird is best bird. And 
Mm -hmm. That bird, I want it to be my best friend forever. That was super fun. I had a ton of fun playing that and Astrobot. Um, what I'm super psyched about right now, though, that I can that is like kiddo friendly that I'm going to be you know talking about more on Super Parent is Battleship Brigade. The Battleship Brigade Deluxe Edition just came out. Really? And yes, I have it. I have it literally right here. Battleship Brigade. Ooh, that's pretty. It's a steel book. That's a Switch steel book? It's a Switch steel book. I got it from Limited Run. And this was my game of the year 2017. I loved this game. I love this game so much. The writing is stellar. The gameplay is stellar. And I got the physical stuff all in. So I got my new Battle Chef Brigade uh, apron that I now wear in the kitchen. Because I already <laughs> had one. Now I have a new one. It's gold. It's got gold lettering on it. And yeah, I have been playing this like nonstop. I. I am obsessed with this game. It is so much fun. The story is so wholesome. Uh, the gameplay is great, very accessible, and yeah, I just, I just absolutely love it. So, for those that don't know, Battle Chef Brigade is. I'm just gonna throw a bunch of buzzwords at you, and Do it. everything I say is true. It is an anim, it is an anime themed, um, cooking hand -drawn. game, hand drawn, cooking game ish. Where yes. you are a chef, specifically a battle chef, traveling about the world, uh, defeating monsters, gathering ingredients, and then the way you cook is you do a match three puzzle with right. the ingredients that you find mm -hmm. and your relative success in the match three, to my understanding, it determines your success in cooking. So yes. if you're crappy at match three, you make bad food, yo. Yeah, it's it's really it's really easy to mess this up too because when you get into the competitions and into the into the arena because you are you know trying to become a battle chef. So when you get into the arena, you're against you're going up against other chefs that are trying to join the battle chef brigade it, to go it, and save the world from monsters. Correct. So, if I may, though, just yeah. not to interrupt you, I just want to ask: Is there a battle chef themed after Bobby Flay? Like, is there a guy with like red hair that likes spicy food? Kind of, I guess. One of the first judges, I suppose, is kind of Bobby Flayish, but All it's right. very Iron Chef, like yeah. through and through and through. It is like very Iron Chef. So yeah, if you're great at match threes and you make sure you pay attention to what dish that the um that the judge is looking for, because some judges like fire, some judges like more water and cooling, and some judges like earth. Um, sure. so you have to have those predominantly like in your dish and sometimes you have to make dishes for three different judges. So you have to run out, go and kill a bunch of monsters, come back in, cook, go out and kill more monsters, come back and cook. And like, it's back and forth and it's frenetic, but it's not frenetic, like overcooked. Yeah. It's frenetic in a, this is just ridiculously satisfying. So it is, it's been so, so much fun sitting back down with Battle Chef Brigade and playing again and recognizing that I'm just like, oh, I love this game. I love it so much. I mean, so, yeah. I, I have not played it. However, it's so good. I mean, that's just, it, it is purely my own fault that I have not played it. Um, I, I'm sure I will at some point. Um, at this point, I'm sure it'll be on sale at some point. Um, oh, for sure. But, so, yeah, man, that game, I, I want to play it. Uh, it's just, it came out at a really bad time for me because uh, there was just other stuff. You know how it goes. Well, I mean, the reality always. is there's always other stuff. Always. Man. I didn't have a job at the time, though. So I was I was between my job at Mike.com and the job that I have now with Game Daily and Super Parents. So. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was a bad time, but you needed something. <laughs> but I needed my thing. I, when I originally saw this, it was at PAX West 2017, and I was hooked. <sighs> Is absolutely hooked. I talked to one of the one of the narrative uh, narrative designers on the game, and she was incredible. She talked to me about, you know, her theory of orc culture and how she wanted one of the characters, his name is Thrash, to be like the benevolent uh, berserker. That's actually his nickname. And he's the a benevolent dad. berserker. Yeah, and he's a dad, and he has, you know, he's got a beautiful wife, and he talks about his kids and his family a lot, and he's like not like an orc. Yeah. He's not like a traditional orc. He's really soft and sweet, and you kind of just want to wrap your arms around him and be like, oh, teddy bear. So it's just I've been in love with this game for two years, and it's been so, so wonderful to go back to those memories and be like, ah, oh, I love this game. <laughs> so enough about Battleship Brigade. That's what I, that's, that's my big thing this week is BCB. 
Um, I'm looking at an embargo to see if there's a thing I can talk about. Um, so bear with me, folks. Ooh, there we go. Um, I'm sorry. Give me a moment, folks. Because if I can talk about this, it is important. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't get the thing to open. So I'm going to assume that I can't. Here's what I can tell you. On April 23rd, I'm probably going to do a live video and talk about what might be my game of the year. Oh. Well, damn. <laughs> um, Are you trying to like, break my brain? What is going on here? Um, I mean, I, I, I can't. Um, so I cannot speak of it because no, you cannot. The the embargo, the embargo beasts will come to me. Um, however, I can say comfortably because I can I can talk about dates without talking about games. I can do it. But here's what's crazy: I can talk about it and tease people. But I can't say the name of the game. How weird is that? Um, it's going to be great, guys. This game I'm thinking about, I'm going to talk to you about it on April 23rd. And you're going to be very happy that I did. Um, and everyone is going to need to get it. Everyone. I believe you. Because as of right now, it's my game of the year. Not close. And everything is chasing after it. And And yes, I know that Animal Crossing is coming and Pokemon is coming. I don't care. Yeah. That's how hi- that's yeah. how hype I am. That is how hype I am. I love how hype you get. To be clear, I love how hype you get. So, with that said, uh, we'll revisit this. Um, you and I will be talking about this game quite a bit. Um, the game that I can talk about... What game can I talk about? I don't know. That I have actually been playing. You know what? Uh, I can't talk about any games that I have been playing. That's okay. So, we talked about um, so many games that I was playing. Yeah. So we're going to stop with Around the Horn because all of the games that I've been playing, um, other than that, other than Falcon Age, which you already talked about very well, um, which I, I think is very cute um, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, my oldest is playing through it. He got really frustrated at a couple parts because um, oh. I will say that it's not super great at telling you what to do, um, <clears throat> but you know he figured it out. A little bit, nothing, a little, nothing. A little walkthrough couldn't hurt. Um, yeah. So, um, thank you for the YouTubes because he was getting pretty irritated. Um, so, um, let's get right into the news because you are the news gal. That is um, my thing. It is your thing. It is one of your many things. Um, also, you're a princess of power. Um, I'm so, so into this. This just makes me so happy. So. Um, well, let's start with Sony first, because that's the cool news. So, Sony came out of nowhere, um, at least to me. Did you know? No, okay. I had no idea. So, Sony came pretty much out of nowhere. Um, I would say out of nowhere, if you didn't know. Um, and gave an exclusive to Wired.com. Those yep. lucky ducks. Why couldn't you guys think of me? <laughs> um, and, I mean, it would have gotten the same amount of press either way. Like, it just would have been linked to me. I'm just saying, Sony, if you want to think about it, I'm, I'm open to exclusives. Um, so they sent Mark Cerny, the charming, yeah. somewhat robotic gentleman, over to meet with Wired. And he dished on the details for, like, the first rough details for what they refuse to confirm will be called the PlayStation 5. But for real, guys, it's going to be called the PlayStation 5. Unless they uh, pull, unless they pull some shenanigans, it's going to be the PlayStation Five. What else could it possibly be? I have no idea. I don't know, but it, I mean, anything's possible, and you know this. I mean, it's true. With that said, this is my only in regards to the name thing. They have direct evidence that sometimes naming things is really stupid if you screw it up. Um. Well, then- like the Xbox One to come after the Xbox 360, which came after the Xbox. And Lord, because now, uh, what is Xbox going to call the next one? Xbox they can't. Next. Maybe, but that's what we thought the Xbox One was going to be. Um, I know, 
I'm holding out hope that I was right. Maybe oh. eventually, if I throw my darts long enough, I'll be You're right. You're hoping that your prediction, you just missed a generation? I mean, that's actually awesome. Um, that's, that also <laughs> means we've been doing this too long. Um, oh, God, don't tell me that. So, um, I mean, if you if you can misfire a prediction by a generation and hit the next one, I mean, I think that's telling. Um but the but you're right. The Sony could name it anything, but I think they have evidence to support that keeping it simple and yeah. making it the PlayStation Five is um, pretty you know pretty solid. I, that's my prediction. I predict that it's going to be called the PS Five. I don't normally I'm not a betting man, so I'm not betting with anyone. Um, but that's what I think. Um, and they gave I think you know some decent sized bullet points that I think are relevant for families. So let me give the bullet points that I think are relevant. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, and then add on if you, uh, because you know everything. So, I mean, considering there's only like seven or eight data points to know, I'm pretty sure that you know them. Um, so, uh, first, um, they confirmed that it is not coming in 2019, so it will not be on sale at any point during this year. Um, I think that's relevant. That means you don't have to worry about it for this holiday. It also means they don't need to worry about it this holiday. Um, they can still sell PlayStation 4s, and they can still sell PlayStation 4 games. Um, so does that mean that it's going to come in 2020 or 2021? I would say probably. I think the absolute latest this thing comes out is the spring of 2021. Um, so, I mean, that means... <laughs> if we think about it, it is now April of twenty eight of twenty nineteen. Wow, it really is April twenty nineteen. Um, and so that means it's midway through April. Yeah, I know, dude. Don't ah! even. I just sent my first uh, email confirming my E three scheduling with all of the e, the uh, EFG crew. I know you're doing the same. Um, I just don't have to book flights, so um, that I have to do yeah, you got to do that. Um, because it's time. It is time. I know it's time. Um, it is time. It means this year is flying by. Um, and so we got the rest of this year, and very likely the majority of next year. I would be really stunned if somehow the PS5 comes out next spring. Like I, I really feel like this is a next September kind of thing. What do you think? I don't know. There. So the interesting thing is that the reveal for the PlayStation Four happened in Q1 of what was it, 2013 yes. or something like that? Yeah, it was Q1 2013. So I think that if they're going to stick with how they did things in the past, then maybe we'll see it for spring or or whatever. So I don't know. I really don't. Yeah. And I, I, like, Sony is such a wild card right now. I thought I – you can't Sony, predict. we thought we knew you. We thought we knew you. How little we knew. How little we knew. So, um, either way, we're going to make it through this holiday season without it. Um, yeah. I feel like, I mean, we'll definitely know within the next couple of months. Um, you know, if it's going to come in the spring of 2020, you know, we, we'll we probably know before or immediately after E3. Um, just because that feels like the appropriate amount of hype cycle. Mm -hmm. um, but man, it can they release a console without showing it at an E3? Like, I get it. it they skipped this year. Convention. It certainly defies convention, but I don't know. But they are defying convention in general, because if we think about it, it is really unconventional to go and have a reveal before a reveal. You know what I mean? Where they're talking about the, the console, the new console, before they have actually announced it. You know, it's it's yeah. weird. It's an interesting. It's like it's a bold move. Yeah. It's a weird flex, though. It is so weird. I don't know. Yeah, it's really strange. Sony's unpredictable. This is this is clearly their year for making some unpredictable, strange decisions. But you're right. What this does is it shows us that we don't have to be worrying about budgeting for a new PlayStation. We likely don't have to be worrying about budgeting for a new Xbox unless, well, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll talk about that one. We'll talk about but, the Xbox shenanigans in a minute. But we may be having to budget for new Switches. Maybe. That has not been confirmed. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so uh, other data points that I think are relevant regarding uh, for families regarding the potential PlayStation 5, um, and I think this is probably the biggest one, is that it's backwards compatible with the PlayStation yeah. 4 yeah. and is compatible with the PlayStation VR. Um, I think that was, I mean, Sony learned by making that wacky PS3 
Um, and for those of you that don't really know, they made the PS3, they ha it had this thing called the Cell Architecture, which basically means they made a fancy console that did its own thing, and um, it was hard to develop for. Now, it did make some amazing games. I mean, The Last of Us was probably one of the prettiest things last generation. Heavy Rain? But Heavy Rain, also great. And lots of family-friendly stuff, too. Go figure. Oh, the first oh, things we go to are, like, the murder fests. But the... Um, are you saying that Heavy Rain isn't child-friendly? <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, <laughs> and anybody that wants to argue that Heavy Rain is child-friendly, I mean, at me, I guess, if we want to have that fight. Not both of us, yeah, really. but that's a but I mean, that's a fight that's we a are prepared to win. That's another flag. Um, yeah, that's that's just like that's an unconventional <laughs> argument. So, um, and so, but it was really hard to take PlayStation Three games and just put them on the PlayStation Four. It required effort, um, it, and and effort means money really effort doesn't mean it's impossible it can absolutely be done but it means money and time which um you know is a detriment and it was hard for companies to make games for the ps3 they had to because sony was a major player but nobody liked it so sony more or less apologized by making the playstation 4 a computer it was a pc it worked i mean more or less they more. I mean, I don't know. Apologize is the right word, but they fixed that error. They made it very easy to make games for it, relatively. Um, yeah. Which is sh which it shows by the number of like when you and I walk around PAX East, or we walk around. You know, you go to GDC. How many of those games are like small indies? And they go, nope. We're going to Steam and PS4, and they do it because it's not that hard to get it done relatively. Anytime I say, this is just a an aside, anytime I say it's not that hard with regards to de game development, I'm like, OMG, using air quotes, and I'm talking relatively, because game development is very hard, but relative to making a brand new game, porting a game from Steam to PlayStation 4, not impossible. Um, and so it makes sense that they would just do that again because it was amazingly successful for them. Tons of games got put on PS4. Um, so now all those PS4 games just immediately become playable on PS5. Yo. Um, and how many of those games would be super easy to just make a PS5 update so they have nicer textures or whatever. I mean, we already see that with, on the Xbox One, where there are Xbox One games that are given Xbox One X upgrade packages, and like they did that to the Master Chief Collection on Xbox, right? So I mean, if they can do it to the Master Chief Collection, they can do it to anything. So Heck yeah. Um. So I think that is a huge deal. Um. It means when the when the P, when it's time for the PS4 to go away, um, you can uh, trade it in or sell it, or give it to a cousin, or something like that, without having to throw out all your games. Um, which is something that a lot of parents are really hesitant to, and this is historic, going back to the Super Nintendo, parents really don't like that idea of buying a new console and having to just, well, you have all these games, so why, why do you need something new? Well, guess what? I need something new because it is the new hotness, but also, I can still play all those things, if you yeah. want me to. Um, also, I think that's really going to be important because ain't nobody going to want to have to start over in Fortnite. You know, yeah. like, they want to make these things go. <coughs> not like... <coughs> not like you would truly have to start over in Fortnite that's on their servers, but you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. But you um, don't want to have to lose your progress regardless. Cor correct. So, um, and the fact that it's going to be compatible with PlayStation VR, um, I think that is but also... like, sitting behind me right now. I can't like see it. There. Oh, there it is. Look, there, I can see it. I mean... That was a um that was an awkward bend. Um but I think your chair is your racing chair is just big and I'm jealous of it. Um I need to get it was one. It's a very nice Christmas present. Yeah, I need to get one. Um uh, after I start streaming. Um that's soon. Yeah, um, we're gonna stream together. It's gonna be fun. Yep. Uh what game are we streaming together? Oh, uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2. Dragon Quest Builders 2, yeah. And we're going to have a World of Warcraft show and a Fortnite show and a Magic the Gathering arena show. Um, yeah. And me and Maggie are going to play something, I'm sure. Some, we're, we're definitely going to play Little Friends uh, because, of course, we are. Um, so, yeah, Nintendogs. So, um, so those, are, I mean, those are the two biggest bullet points. I mean, they obviously, it's going to be bigger, faster, stronger. Right, the graphics are going to be better, but we knew that. That's just 
of course, the next generation is going to be better. Um, I think the biggest thing out of the technical specs that they were talking about is the fact that they're going to include a solid state hard drive. Yeah. For those that do not know what that is. That's going to revolutionize game development, BT dubs. Okay. Well, we'll let, let, let me define it first, and then you can explain to me why, because that's going to be, that's the first, you're the first person to say that to me. So, solid state hard drive without getting into the weeds, it is a kind of hard drive that works different than old school ones, because um, the other ones were more or less a disc that spun around and it was optical. Um, solid state is not that. I truthfully don't even know what it is, but. Um, it organizes data in such a way that um, the PlayStation or the computer that has one can pull data off it faster. Um, so the example they gave is fast traveling in Spider-Man normally takes about 15 seconds. In the demo that they did, it was less than one. Um, that is a significant change in gameplay. Um, I really want to play Skyrim with one second load times. Could you imagine how different that game is? Think about no. it. No, no. I mean, I'm thinking about it right now. And my mind is blown. That's completely. I mean, nuts. um, exactly, and that and that's the thing, right? So, um, another thing is games are limited by how, they limit how fast you can go by how fast the game can load the environments. So, right. if it can load the environments faster, that means you can actually move faster in the game, right. which you know, not like I've ever felt like particularly slow. Like when I was playing Spider-Man and like zipping through New York, I didn't feel particularly slow, but you know what? I bet you I could go faster if they had the technology. Now you said that it's going to revolutionize game development. Explain but specifically for the PlayStation. It's yeah. going to revolutionize game development. Ex explain for so, me. So they're no longer going to be limited by it, it. Like you said, the PlayStation is a miniature computer, right? Not yep. like the PlayStation three where it was just, a mess and it was challenging as heck to develop for developing for pc in general you have an array of options ahead of you you are not limited by the hardware you optimize for hardware when you get to the point where it's like okay well we're ready to optimize but you don't do that until you're close to the end of the of the development cycle what's nice about what i think rather is going to be really revolutionary about this for console only developers so developers that are potentially first party and yeah. they are developing only for PlayStation, they are no longer limited by a magnetic drive. They are not limited by how slow those older drives tend to go. Now, those optical drives are cheaper than solid state drives, but solid state drives, to give, to give everybody, you know, like the somewhat technical rundown, and this is according, this is a definition according to lifewire.com. Yep. Um, so solid state is a term that refers to the electronic circuitry that is built entirely out of sem semiconductors. Uh, so for a solid state drive, it refers to the primary storage medium is being created through semiconductors rather than a magnetic media, which is a traditional uh, platter hard drive. Thank you for breaking that down for me. Because you, like I said, you know, you know things. Uh, um, I mean, I went and I searched for like a decent definition because i know what it is like in my brain but i couldn't figure out how to explain it so yeah solid state drives are really they're they're the reason why i can play anthem on my pc with al almost no load time yeah and, and it's, it's 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 revolutionary for playing games and it's revolutionary for making games because you're not limited by older storage mediums you can it's yeah. like it's like lightning to a degree i mean unless Xbox also includes a similar hard drive. Um, they likely will. Yeah. I would. Ass I, I. I'm operating uh, under that assumption. I assume nothing, only because I've been burned. Um, okay. but you're probably right. Yeah. You're probably right. But um, if they don't include one, that puts them at a significant disadvantage. It does. Um, so we'll see. Um, the. So, were there any other details that they uh, that they shared that you think are relevant to the people listening? I don't think there's anything else in there that's really relevant to to our audience. There's a lot of other relevant stuff in terms of you know business analysis, but no, nothing nothing for parents and for and for families. We just know, yeah, you got to buy one now, and when you do buy one, you'll be able to play all your old stuff on it, there you go. which is really great, and it's going to be very pretty. It's going to make gonna some very pretty games.
It is going to make some really pretty games, and there have been some beautiful games on the PlayStation 4. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm hopeful. You know, I'll obviously get, I'll go and get myself a PlayStation 5 or PlayStation whatever. Um, I'm going to go with PlayStation Senko. I'm going to go with Senko. Oh, I like that. Senko. I'm going to go with that. Okay. Um, why not? I support that. I support your choices in life. Sure. So, so that's Sony. That's Sony. So Sony Sony did a great thing. Um, The other thing I would say is, in general, outside of some people who are just always cynical and some people who are concerned about the price because solid state hard drives are expensive. They are expensive. But we don't know. Also, this thing's not coming out right away. So we don't know. We can't tell the future. And hardware is always a loss leader. So by loss lead, so being a loss leader in business means that Sony is going to be ca- – they're going to be banking on the fact that they're going to be losing money on the PlayStation. They always lose money on the hardware. They make up their money in software, which is why – First party games are so important. Yeah. So like it's like Spider Man, right? That's those are console sellers. That's where they make their money. They make it up in volume rather than in like, oh my goodness, we're losing money on a PlayStation because they yeah. are every single time. Yeah. PlayStation loses money, Nintendo loses money, Xbox loses money, Microsoft loses money rather. They all lose money. They're there the for the games. games. And the the revenue from their storefronts. Absolutely. Um which in some cases aren't even their games. So um, on the so on the one hand, Sony made some good news. Uh, some people were perplexed with their method of delivery, but yeah, they, they, really but people were happy with the news. Um, mm-hmm. Microsoft, on the other hand, dropped an egg. Um, oh. And so here's what they did. Um, Microsoft announced the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, otherwise known as uh, colloquially the Xbox One Sad. Um, yeah. It's the sad box. The sad box. Now, the reason... So, the all-digital means that this is a console that doesn't have a disk drive. Um, Now, this is something... I talked about this on the EFG Daily Commute a long time ago because there were reports that this were going to come and that it was going to be a cheaper box. And it is. However, um, it's $250 for the Xbox One S all-digital edition, which is admittedly $50 less than the MSRP of the Xbox One S regular edition that includes the same specs with the exception of it actually has a disk drive. Um, And man, uh, were people underwhelmed. Um, I shared the news on the EFG Facebook page and I didn't even get, um, I didn't even get anyone defending them, let alone providing anything like positive. Everybody was like, "Why are we doing this?" I can give right, us you know. some context. Yeah, I, so, I genuinely can. Okay, so yeah, so what's up? Tell me your thoughts okay. on this. So I feel like where people tend to forget, and because we, it's very human to think about things from our own perspectives and our own life experiences. I think that where people forget is that what Xbox is looking to do, what Microsoft is looking to do, is break into a different market they're looking to break into a market that is maybe significantly removed from gaming and they're this is going to be their first console and they've been they've been intimidated by games or they're like there are so many games and I don't know which ones to buy for me for my kid for whatever and then what Xbox what Microsoft is doing with the um, Xbox one all digital whatever um, all digital edition they are enabling folks to bot, to just play games digitally to rent games digitally essentially is that they're they're not looking for ownership they're looking for play hours they're looking for you know how many different kinds of games people are playing I mean this is all data for them as well but I think that that's kind of the market that they're looking to break into is that they're looking to break into the intimidated mainstream, you know, more mainstream and off to the side, like, oh, I've been waiting to buy an Xbox and I just, I, I've just been so intimidated by it and there aren't really any games. Well, but what if we gave you our library of games from Xbox Game Pass and we included Xbox Live, Xbox, uh, our, our Xbox Live in that as well. And we just tossed it all together and we tossed it into a console. Now, the pricing on this, terrible. Truly, truly, truly terrible. The value add is supposed to be the subscription service, but it's not there. It's underwhelming because it's like, why would I buy this? Why 
why would anyone buy this? Even if they are brand new to gaming and they're looking to buy a new Xbox, why would they not just buy the S and yeah. be able to use be able to use the disc drive so they can watch Blu-rays, right? Yeah. This is going to be their media their media machine. Or borrow their cousin's OG Xbox games for backwards compatibility. Like that's the yeah. other thing is that by losing the disc drive, the backwards compatibility program is gone. Like now you can buy old games, but you can't use sure. your old ones. It's um, true. So it's um, everything you but said. I think, but I think that that's the reason why they're starting to move in that market. And I think that if they if they fix the pricing and they make it like. I don't know, 150. I think 150 is probably a reasonable price for this machine. That's what I would pay for it if I were a parent and I was looking to purchase for my kid for the first time. All right, you know what? 150 bucks is not too bad. That's like if I bought him uh, or if I bought them rather a um a new Nintendo 2DS. Yep. About that. But it's yeah. an Xbox. And it, then my kid can play, you know, can play Fortnite and Minecraft and Terraria and yeah. you know whatever else and there's a lot of family friendly titles in um, Xbox uh, Game Pass so you know it the price the price is where a lot of people are falling down right now well and the, the i mean the price is really where i think most of the people that you know on our facebook page had an issue with it um yeah. for the me the price is unreasonable and i think the re- for me um i guess some of this we're going to just have to see how it shakes out right because this is the MSRP um, and so the, you know, when you know, MSRP is only relevant. So, you know, in, in certain situations, um, you know, the, the perceived value of an Xbox one S is that it's 200 bucks because at any time I can go like right now, like IGN actually has an article. I, I referenced it during the EFG show today, um, that where they go out and they find a bunch of bundle, they found a bunch of bundles on various retailers, where you can get the the regular S for less than an Xbox One S All Digital Edition, and um, you know one of them was a you know an NBA Two K nineteen bundle with an Xbox One S for two hundred and nineteen dollars, which yeah. means we talked if, about that today on uh, on our on our uh, the piece that Mike wrote on Game Daily. Yeah. So yeah, it's like the if you so when you look at the perceived value that almost brings the you know, the console down to like 150 bucks. So yeah. the, um, so we don't know. Cause I mean, you're right. This is, I mean, well, I'm right in this case, the MSRP is 250, right? So somebody could put it on sale and it could end up being $150 when it's all said it and done, be. but we Absolutely. don't know. And we just don't know right now. The, the most important thing I think looking at this from a parenting perspective is just hold off. Yeah. If you don't have an Xbox, just hold off. Because I don't Agreed. think that the um, Xbox One S All Digital Edition is a good buy at this juncture. I think that if it goes on sale, cool, great. If you've been waiting for an Xbox and this sounds like a great idea to you because you don't have physical media, you know, like you, no one but Steve can see my see the back there, but I have a library of physical media behind me. So we need the disk drives. I have an Xbox One S sitting on my desk right now, like right next to me. I never use it, like rarely. I really only use it for Forza, um, because I'm a sucker for Forza Horizon. I mean, who isn't? Oh god. Um, geez. but I mean, yeah. So, like, just hold off. Yeah, hold just off wait. And wait for it to go on sale, um, because that's the only that's the only reasonable thing to do. Wait until it goes on sale for 150 bucks, and then. Or. Just buy the other one. I mean, the. The real, the real killer diller on that is if you are super jazzed and psyched about the Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live, and you're just really excited about just trying a bunch of different kinds of games and knowing that you don't have to purchase another game, that's the other piece of the value add that I think that Microsoft is not communicating. It's that you don't have to buy, you don't necessarily have to buy any games. You just subscribe to game pass and that gives you new games every month you get access to all their first party games so games that are developed by microsoft or by studios that microsoft has either purchased or you know hired so i mean i mean i get that but you get that i mean you get that with a regular with one that has a disk drive too and it's just like if you really don't want to wait just get the one that's 
I mean, because two hundred and twenty dollars, like the the X at Walmart right now, the um, Xbox One S Minecraft Creators Edition, um, Good is edition, by the way. is yeah is an Xbox One S with a one terabyte hard drive and Minecraft included, um, is two hundred dollars, one hundred ninety nine ninety nine. That is an incredible value for a console. That is nearing the end of its life cycle, which means all some good games are coming out for it, Um, and it already has great games, as evidenced by what is going to be available for you on Xbox Game Pass. Um, You know, like that's a great value. Like if you want Mm -hmm. it and you don't have one, um, if you don't really want one, then maybe you wait. Like maybe you wait until you see one hit. You know, because we know, we, you and I both know, anecdotally, plenty of people that waited on a PS2 until they were, like, $90. Yeah, so and that's perfectly legitimate. I mean, if what you're looking for is to get in on console gaming when when it's cheapest, like, I get it. I totally understand. Gaming is an expensive hobby. It's an expensive thing to keep around mm-hmm. the house. Not everybody is a game journalist and have access to, you know, codes and everything like that. So it's, it's an expensive thing to keep up with, especially with, ki- with kiddos around. So... If you're waiting on an Xbox, don't get this one. Yeah. Either go get yourself a regular S or save up for the X. The X is a great friggin' console. It's better than the PlayStation 4 Pro. The specs are better on the place than the PlayStation 4 Pro. Yep. Um the only difference there is that you're likely going to have better exclusives on In fact, you are going to have better exclusives on the X on the uh, PlayStation. Because you have all the first party games that have been coming out, like God of War and, you know, but don't play that with your kid. But like Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is also a good one. That's rated T. So, you know, lots of really good, lots of really good games over on the PlayStation. So yeah. just like, wait, wait for yeah. sales. Yeah, pretty That's much. That's all I'm going to say. And, this, and the sad box is probably never really going to take off, which is sad in, in and of itself. <laughs> the sad box is sad. Um, because I know that this is the future that Microsoft so desperately wanted with the Xbox One, but they're not there yet because that the value proposition isn't good enough, and the perceived value isn't yeah. strong enough. But also, this could just be priming the pump for what they're going to do next exactly. generation, which absolutely. we know they're going to do the same thing with they these two. They are absolutely. They were saying, I think it was Thrott that put together a, a report on this. And they were saying that Scarlet, because right now it's called Project Scarlet, um, is going to have a diskless and potentially a leasing program as well. They had a very brief moment in time where they were doing like a, a like a rent to own situation with the Xbox. I think that they want to reintroduce that with Scarlet as well. So, but that again, these are all rumors. We don't have any confirmation of any of this. Yeah. And I mean... Xbox has Phil Spencer. Like and if you and if you're listening to the to the podcast and you've never heard of Phil Spencer, I genuinely encourage you to look up some of the stuff that he's done at Microsoft over the past over the past three years, especially because no, it's he's, pretty. Rem- yeah, he's a great guy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and he knows what he's doing. Um, he certainly helped he navigate. He took a foundering brand and made it into something ex- incredible. So yeah, no, he he does. Uh, he has done some amazing work. So I so. All right, so here we go. It's a it's a tale of two consoles, as always, but um, yeah. two very different announcements, and they came at the same on the same day. On the same day, it was incredible. Yeah. So I know you have a hard out. Um, I do, so, and we but are I've approaching got five minutes. So we can talk about Ninty. Yeah, let's talk about Nintendo. So <laughs> yeah. the um so Nintendo has um so we have reports that Nintendo is going to be releasing some new stuff later this year. We don't have confirmation yet. Um, but the the theory, uh, based on these reports, is that they're going to have like a fancy version and also so like a, a slim Switch version, Pro. a Switch Pro, um, and then a light version, which would be potentially just a handheld only Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have confirmation. Yeah. No, there's no confirmation on any of this at all. But we're looking. This is this also follows Nintendo's like the way that they tend to handle their their handheld consoles, right? I mean, the DS went through this, the DSi, and then there was the DS Lite, and then the yep. 3DS, the 2DS, and whatever. They've had like they've had so many um, versions yeah. of even just one con- handheld console life cycle, and this is a hybrid. So I mean, of course, they're going to have a bunch there too. So I mean, it's it's anybody's guess as to when that will be 
when that'll end up being a thing. I'm 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 going to make a guess. I'm going to make an educated guess and say that this is going to be holiday of this year. So if I think that if anything is going to end up breaking the bank in homes this this Christmas, this holiday season, it's probably going to be Switch. <laughs> I mean, Switch is going to have a bananas year. It's got Pokemon oh and Animal Crossing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Joker geez. and Switch, which or Joker and Smash, yes. sorry, which is like that makes so. A lot which of means Smash. Smash is still going to be. It's crazy. Just yeah, this is going to be it's a gonna bananas be a holiday. Uh, it's going to be a bonkers year. Because also, if you don't have a Switch yet, that means you haven't played Zelda yet, um, which is better than every game that I've mentioned on this podcast. Um, so it's it's crazy to think about what the switch what the potential for the switch is, um, and we don't even know. I mean, the reality is they could not release those things. Um, uh, what I my but educated it would still guess sell like hotcakes at, correct at holiday time, right? Because it's yes. just, it's still a, the fairly it's still fairly new in its own life cycle because it only came out in twenty seventeen. So I mean, it's only two years in. It's still a baby. Yeah, it is still a baby. Um, I mean the the the, the DS lived almost forever um here's my guess uh my guess is we're going to hear more about this at their earnings call which is tomorrow when's the nintendo earnings call hold on nintendo earnings call is soon yeah you probably have to listen to it no i don't tend to listen to oh do you have people Um, for that no i just i just download the uh i just download the um seeking alpha stuff also also you have people for that I also do have people for that. This is very true. I don't. Uh, no. But, so it's not tomorrow? I'm taking a look. Silly. Uh, no, it's April 25th. Oh, so next week. Yeah. Okay. So then. That'll be, well, that'll be for, um, yeah, so that's April April 25th. So that's next week. Next. Um, yeah, so that's okay. soon. That's yep. soon. Um, I think we're going to hear about something then. Um, because that's when we're going to okay. find out what... Hold on. Nope, I was right. Nope, April 25th. I'm sorry. I okay. thought I was messed up. <laughs> so um, that's when I think they're going to talk about it. Because um, we're going to find out whether or not the Switch hit $20 million in the last year. Which I don't think it will. I think they... But didn't they amend it back down to like $17 million? Yeah, but... But we still get to find out whether or not it hit twenty. Either way, I mean, I'm not wrong. It's just not what their actual projection was. Um, their projection is seventeen. I think that they're going to hit seventeen. I don't. I mean, think they'll probably gonna... hit seventeen. Um, so uh, they're definitely going to hit seventeen. Um, so um, and it would just make sense for them to be like, hey, we sold a bunch. Like this is insane, and uh, we're going to have even stronger next year because we're going to release X new model uh, that's a revision of it, and we're going to announce more of that at E3. Like that's what I bet. Something, some, something like shaped ish like that. Yeah. That's, um, because that sounds like something that they would say at an earnings call, where they'd be like, "Yeah, we sold a bunch, but yeah, we're gonna have good. We're we have gonna have good. We got, we got surprises. Stuff. Yeah. We got stuff um. Also, here, yeah. like they're gonna drop the mic and be like, "Yo, kids, we also are gonna be releasing Pokemon and Animal Crossing later on this year. Yeah, boy. Um, oh, and then leave. So, um, I'm just gonna mic drop and then just like get out of yeah. there. Yeah. So and and I get to talk about it. Um on an EFG daily commute probably the day after. So, Amanda, I know you have to leave um, because it is late. So, folks, this has been episode 173 of Engage, a family gaming podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening as much as Amanda and I enjoyed recording it. Um, We're going to be back next week where we will actually talk about actual card games and probably some other board games, too, because there's some other stuff that came out, too. Uh, and we'll talk about all those things. I'm going to talk about a little game Maybe called Rubik's Race. Maybe we should to talk about X-Wing. Yeah, you, can you schedule that for me? I could, as a matter of fact. I you will ask you him talk to him to more frequently than I do. Um, it's almost like I live with him. Yeah, it's true. So uh, maybe we could talk about some X Wing and some magic um, and some Transformers. Yeah. Um, so until next time, folks, um, I do have I, I, I normally have favors, but really all I want you to do is like us on Facebook. That's it. That's all I'm asking. It's not much. Um, so until next week, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you then. Bye. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week.